Hey everyone, it is Monday morning. Welcome to Phoenix Gaming. I'm your host, Nick Henning, and we are at day two of the WSBG. So a quick rundown of day one here. I was playing Great Western Trail. I was really disappointed for that to be the first day game. I like having my best game as something to look forward to over the course of the week. Um, but instead, I do have the possibility of maybe like winning on the first day and then feeling low stress for the rest of the week. Um, so... Cutting to the chase, I got to the finals and then ended up losing by a few points, which is pretty heartbreaking. This is uh, my fourth final, fourth consecutive final at WSBG that I ended up not winning. So in total, I've played nine WSBG games, made six finals, which is pretty sick, and I won the first two of them, the last four, no dice. So uh, I need to talk to myself about my runs of hot luck. They need to need to get spread out a little bit more. Um, it's interesting. I... I have told myself that this is probably my last year at WSBG unless I win a ring again. It is a little bit pricier than I would like it to be for an event. I really like this event, but it's pricey. It's pricey to fly across the country. The event itself is expensive. Being in Vegas is expensive. I'm I'm on a uh, I've got a cough drop in my throat right now because like whatever they pump into these Vegas hotels is awful. Um, which makes me feel really crummy like every single year uh picked up covid last year i mean it's just like it's not it there's a sample of things that are like not my ideal about it being in vegas like the event but the like location around it i'm not very good at taking advantage of being in this place so i do think that if you enjoy vegas or like would be a person who takes advantage of it it changes the the valuation of that stuff but anyway i'm, I'm kind of going on a rant uh or, or side tangent here uh, yeah, so I, I, I feel like I've put a lot of pressure on myself to do well this year um, because of that, like the financial side of things and like wanting to, to, to win. So definitely a little heartbreaking to get to the end there, but as always, very satisfying to get there. So let's talk through the day. Um, there were 51 competitors in Great Western Trail, which is the smallest it's been. I think the first year was 64. Last year was 70 something. And then this year, I, I heard it was 51. I played three four-player tables. So I know a bunch of people played three-player in the first round. But um, other than that, it was four-player tables all the way down. So that's really, really great for the event. I'd be worried that 51 knocked it out of the event. But they already announced what the games were for 2025. And GWT is still in the list. So hooray for that. Um but that definitely made it also one of the easier games to win this year because you only need to win three rounds rather than four rounds, which was true for, you know, every other game yesterday, Heat, Ticket to Ride, and Wingspan. They were all four-round games. And that's probably going to be true for most of the games throughout the week, except for maybe like Brass Birmingham and Raw, I would guess, are maybe also three-rounders. But we'll see when we get to those days because they haven't published any numbers around them. I heard that in total there's around 700 unique players at this event. Um, that is similar i think to last year i don't quite remember uh but it, it means that you know most tournament sizes are going to be like the hundred ish range every day because that 700 includes people who are like just playing side events or just went to the war game invitational which was pretty small but seemed like it was cool um from chatting with a few people uh about it and uh, okay so let's run through the game so game one was a a, a builder heavy game um the woman to my left bought a builder at the beginning the man to my right uh who was i think probably the best other player at the table um bought two builders i bought two builders and there were still builders to buy <laughs> um so three players were going builder that game uh but builders got kind of soaked up um i ended up getting the most of them getting up to that six spot and uh i was able to bump the six guy off by taking a station master and replacing it i think i did it maybe two times so i actually ended up skipping the building space a lot of times because i didn't have the cash to buy a new builder i was buying very expensive builders and i was using that um that four spot building that lets you uh hire somebody for discount of one and move your train a little bit and then the four 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 you know four dollars four train movement four cowboy move was the other high building. So both the player to my right and I had the 444 active, but I was farther ahead on the track. And the most significant thing in this whole game was that the woman to my left, she kind of went builders, but because we she got boxed out, she then like slid into engineers and was like having a hard time exactly figuring out what to do. Um, and I 
uh, rushed the the build of the four four four, as well as grabbing a few extra movement along the way, which lot let me slot into the um, the third station master track, which was the two points per building thing. So the game ended up going long. We had every single space except for three spaces on the board with some building on it, which is absolutely nuts. Um, but I scored something absurd, like 120 in this game. And definitely, uh, definitely walked away with a W there. Really pleasant opponents. Honestly, it was like one of my favorite games that I've played um, in a while. Just in terms of like good, good table presence, banter. Always feels good because the guy who's sitting diagonal from me was like, "Oh, I watched your video in preparation for this," which was a lot of fun. Um, and then, uh, uh, then we, there was a bit of break, and then we headed on to round two. In round two, the breaks were really long because we only had three rounds, so. It's, I guess it's nice that you're like allowed to go take a break, but I, I prefer to get things done with. So <laughs> I actually wish that we had not had that uh, situation, but it is what it is. So round two, I was seated with Jonathan, last year's wing, ring winner, a guy that I know from online, uh, BBB, who is very good. Um, I think he's actually like higher rated than I am on, on, on ELO for GWT right now. Um, and another guy who I was like, I think I recognize your name. Turns out that his BGA name is his name. And so I, I just like remembered from playing him on BGA before. So three very, very good players. Um, and it was a game with no cowboy support, but the cow market was in the bottom left corner and the builder or the like heads market was like right at the beginning of the game. So early on, Jonathan moved into builders, which seemed very, very good. Um, I I was last, even though I was second seat. I like sort of dilly dallied at the beginning. Like I took some extra money because there were some good bandits, and I like threw a taxer down that paid me a ton of money over the course of the game. Um, player three bought a pair of cowboys. Player four bought a pair of engineers. And then just based on what was left in the market, I could have moved into engineers or cowboys. Maybe I could have like bought a builder and something else, but I don't love the split when everyone else is kind of like narrowed in. And I didn't have any ones, so I just listened to my deck and I went into Cowboys. I, there was no Cowboy support in terms of the building in the game. You know that it's usually my recommendation not to play the strategy in that case. But because the cows were in the bottom left and there was stuff in the middle like the bandits... Um, and then at the end, there was like the hazard remover. I was like, okay, I've got actions to take kind of throughout the whole course if I want to want to go this path. The first station master spot was the um, the building spot. So the engineer and the builder kind of like had to jockey, jockey awkwardly around each other. Jonathan got really unlucky throughout the whole course of the game, just like really struggling to hit 10, even once he hit his, um, his max cert building. Uh, but the rest of us did make his life more difficult. I bought a next a second builder. Um, the player to my left, who had originally bought two cowboys, had basically no options when he went to get heads next. So he bought into builders and actually like duplicated the builder player's certificates situation, which was really cool. And um, the engineer player bought one of the builders as well, which is pretty common for an engineer. You can just kind of like throw them away in a station master building, which is exactly what happened. Game went a little bit fast for the engineer player. He um, essentially ended up playing exploding engineers and taking all the station masters, which is a strategy I really like. But I think he didn't have enough time. It was like a smidge behind on tempo to like really take advantage of all those station master tiles uh, in the way that you're hoping to when you're playing that strategy. The player in the third seat, having the duplicate certificate thing and being cowboys meant that he... Um, was making amazing deliveries and had like run of the map and like places where to go, lots of options. He had like good buildings in play because he had the one that like gives you extra money and everything like that. But even still, builders and cowboys are just so, so hungry for money. He um, didn't have the cash to make all the things that he needed happen. He ended the game with three cowboys and five builders. So, right, he's like missing that six slot, the four slot, uh, which obviously really hurts. So, you just needed more cash to make everything work, and the game wasn't quite long enough to make that happen. Um, we also started the game with tons and tons of bandits, so there's a lot of money flowing at the beginning, but not necessarily nearer to the end. Um, Jonathan just got stymied by having all of the uh, poor deliveries, but also he basically had nothing going on except for building. So um, there weren't really alternate like like points that he was making. And meanwhile, I just uh, I just kind of like basically capped out. Cowboys sort of ended up moving into uncontested Cowboys because uh, player in slot three 
moved into builders, which I think was correct for him. Like, I don't think that he should have stayed in Cowboys or tried to fight me for Cowboys. I think that just makes him lose even more. But um, I did that and I had a nice flow in the map where I could, you know, remove a couple hazards here and there. I got certificates. My deck was also very kind to me. Like, I did have some way of, like, cycling things even without the Cowboy Shuffler. But still went really well. I ended that game with 81 to 60, 60, 60. All the other players tied with each other. And we went on to the final. Um, the final was, well, you know, I'm going to do commentary on this game. So I don't want to talk too, too much about it. Short version is I was in seat three. And the player in seat four wins with builders. The player in seat one was cowboys. And the end scores were... 89 builders, 87 cowboys, 83 me, and then unfortunately 44 to the player to my right who was playing engineers. I moved into exploding engineers after them and ended up stealing a bunch of station master tiles. I did that because I thought it would really hurt them, which it did, and because the builder strategy had the 444. And so I think that the builder strategy with the 444, I thought without being able to take any station master tiles would be pretty bad. And turns out I was wrong because. He was still able to basically build that, just make a ton of cash, and then build up to the 12 building, lets you remove hazards. Honestly, that 12 building wasn't even that great. It's more of the journey of the points that, that he makes for it. And a couple extra, you know, decent points that he made off of that too. Um, yeah, he just, he didn't really end up getting stymied in any way except for what I did at the beginning of the game. But the movement was like too loose in the game. We didn't do enough like sort of building blocking, I think, or something like that. I'll have to see when I do the, the rewind of the thing. I think that if a couple things go different for me, I actually end up winning this game. Uh, the player to my right, who I kind of stymied with engineers, he decided he wanted to move into Cowboys and try to get some points that way, which had been my backup plan after doing the Exploding Station Masters so I could score some points. And when he ended up taking the rest of the Cowboys in play, I was like, okay, I basically have no head strategy left anymore, and I'm just trying to score a couple points here and there. If the game ends a little bit faster, I think I win. If the game... Um, if I, it's just like a couple extra like points of luck. Like I needed, I needed more hazards to come out early so I could remove the higher value hazards, and it slows down everybody a little bit. Like I was the person who suffered least from being slowed down because I had the least of game plan, um, least game plan. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I think it'll be a really interesting game to review. It had a lot of like fundamentals and that pl players slotted into their strategies. Um, I'll especially be interested to talk about the interaction between me and the engineer player because I think it was the most dynamic part of the game for sure. Today we're playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. I uh, chose that as you, if you're a watcher of this channel, you know that probably um, I chose it because I won at the WBC. Um, so I have since been practicing a bunch online. If you, just some extra background, I like played Lost Ruins of Arnak when it first came out a bunch. To the point that actually I got hit up for playtesting the first expansion um, because they were doing playtesting on BGA, which was really cool. And so my, you know, my like rating went really high and then it was like there for a long time and I kind of stopped playing Lost Ruins of Arnak online. When they announced that this was the game last year, I was like, ooh, let me play some Lost Ruins of Arnak and see if I'm ready. I proceeded to lose a whole bunch of games in a row, completely lost my confidence and said, all right, this isn't going to be the game for me. Then when I won at WBC, I said, all right, <laughs> clearly I should play this game. And I've been practicing, 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 and like shooting up in the rating. So it's been really hot. But the last two games I played before coming here, I lost both of those. <laughs> so kind of a little bit ominous. That's not like the vibe you want with like a cursed idol sort of themed game. But uh, we're going to see what happens. See you tomorrow.